I just finished one of the best books I've ever read, which is Waking Up by self-proclaimed atheist Sam Harris, who has found spirituality while still being atheist. Stay tuned as we discuss this book. What's up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing this book, Waking Up by Sam Harris. I read a ton of books and with these books I read, it's how I make a lot of these videos. I try to share this information with you to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. So make sure you check out the description if you're interested in this book, there will be a link. And if you buy the book with that link, it helps support the channel. I get a little bit of dough off of it, but also there will also be a link to my full reading list. But anyways, this book, was absolutely amazing. Well, uh, my best friend has been telling me like, you gotta check out Sam Harris, you gotta check out Sam Harris. I'm like, okay, I will check out Sam Harris. And I'm so glad that she made me check him out because this is literally one of the best books I've ever read in my life. I love it. And one of the reasons why is because I often explain to people and I tell them I'm like, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. And Sam Harris even touches on this in his book. He says, when you tell people that, you often get disturbing looks from both sides, right? From religious people as well as atheists, but there is a reason why. One of the things that Sam Harris starts his book off with, he talks about how the English language or even modern times has kind of altered what spirituality actually means. Chances are, if you're watching this, you might've immediately equated spirituality to a religion, right? There's a lot of people who didn't even click on this video because when they hear, hear the word spirituality, they immediately think of religion, and that's not the case. Something that Sam Harris talks about in his book is that spirit actually comes from the Latin word breath. That's it, and spirituality, all spirituality is, is an inward investigation of the mind as well as its consciousness. And through that, we begin to find freedom and more truths about you know our perception of what reality is. So this is what people who meditate have been doing for years. It's this kind of inward kind of uh, diagnosis of the human condition and of the mind. So many of us are running on this autopilot and we don't even understand that we're we're running off of these core beliefs that have been implanted uh, in us by you know our parents or society and a lot of things based on our happiness are because of these things. And when we meditate and we slow down and we do this inward reflection, we start to find the truths about things. For example, oh wait, I'm not ugly, I just have this false idea of what I think a guy my age and my type should look like. You see what I mean? Oh wait, um, I don't need all this money, I just think I need this money so I can buy things to impress people. So spirituality is really diving in to ourselves and seeing what's going on. So one of, the, one of my favorite quotes uh, from this book, um, and yes, like if any of you have been watching my channel, I do audiobooks, so when I say read, I'm actually listening. But here's one of my favorite quotes right here. Thinking is indispensable to us. It is essential for belief formation, planning, explicit learning, moral reasoning, and many other capacities that make us human. Thinking is the basis of every social relationship and cultural institution we have. It is also the foundation of science. But our habitual identification with thought that is, our failure to recognize thoughts as thoughts, as appearances in consciousness, is a primary source of human suffering. It also gives rise to the illusion that a separate self is living inside one's head. All right, so that was towards the beginning of the book, and this is something that I talked about in another video, which I will link in the uh, info card above, but we identify too closely with our thoughts, and that leads to suffering. We have this idea, one of the biggest myths that we have is that there is some kind of internal self sitting in our head. There is there is this king, there is this CEO, this is there is this operator, and we are in charge of all of our own thoughts. And what Sam Harris says, like in this part of the book, he says, go ahead and stop, pause this book for 60 seconds, and do nothing but focus on your breath. Do not think for 60 seconds, right? And a lot of people, especially novice meditators, you're gonna see the thoughts just start popping up, popping up, popping up, and that's completely normal. So 
in actuality, we're not in control of our own thoughts. And what meditation does, it helps us just start sitting back and watching these thoughts. So throughout this book, Sam Harris, he talks about his experience. His first experience was actually when he did um, MDMA, and that's when he first had a spiritual experience. And he's like, whoa, I really wanna start checking out the inner workings of the mind. And what he came to realize is that he didn't need psychedelics to do this. One of my other favorite quotes in this book that I'm gonna do another more in-depth video on is that he says something along the lines that um, psychedelics are like a missile without a guidance system. So when you do psychedelics, you might have a spiritual experience and some kind of awakening and a little bit of enlightenment, but there are people who have quote unquote, bad trips. And all psychedelics are doing, they're tapping into parts of the brain that are already there. That's all that these drugs are doing. So when people talk to me, because some of you know that I'm in recovery, when people talk to me about how they wanna do these certain things to find their spirituality, like it's a very slippery slope for addicts and alcoholics, right? So I try to teach them that anything that a drug produces, you can find through meditation. Any experience that somebody's had with psychedelics, you will find identical experiences with people who have meditated, okay? But anyways, I absolutely love this book and because it's all about spirituality with, without religion. For any of you addicts in recovery out there, one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons that people do not get involved with 12-step programs is because they have a hard time d differentiating the difference between uh, spirituality and religion, right? Like, I was telling my clients today after I finished this book, I said, if it was up to me, this book would be required for everybody to read when they came into treatment. I honestly believe that anybody who is trying to get sober, or even if you're in early recovery and you're struggling with things, I honestly think that you have to read this book. Like, if an atheist can find spirituality and still be an atheist, then it's something that you should definitely check into. But even somebody out there like you who is not in recovery or you don't have an addiction, you just struggle with anxiety or depression or other emotional issues or tr a traumatic past, any of these things, right? Spirituality is something that can help you out because like I said, all it is is an inward investigation. And Sam Harris does a very, very, very good job of talking about the pros and cons. He talks about, um, the different situations in which you should start meditating or if you have certain forms of mental illness like schizophrenia, it may be best to talk to uh, your psychiatrist first or psychologist first. Like he, he does a very good job of talking about like the honest pros and cons. He even points out some different gurus and um, people who have done uh, the wrong things when it comes to getting, gaining a spiritual following. Like he's just extremely honest and extremely ch transparent. I love that in a book because you know the author isn't trying to push any type of agenda. I feel by the time of in, by the time I ended this book that Sam Harris legitimately all he wants to do is help people understand this and realize that this is something that is available to anybody and everybody. The last quote from this book that I will share with you that hopefully sells you on picking this book up and checking out is this quote right here. And he says, "Confusion and suffering may be our birthright." but wisdom and happiness are available. And that is so true. So I highly recommend that you check this book out. Again, it's Waking Up by Sam Harris. There is a link down in the description below, as well as another link to my entire reading list, which is over at therewiredsoul.com. So feel free to check it out. But anyways, um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. I also do videos about addiction recovery. So hit the little round subscribe button. And if you got time, click or tap on one of those thumbnails right there. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.